All right, guys, uh, on to the next thing here, the second big idea in this vectors chapter, and actually the last thing in this chapter is inclined planes, forces involved with inclined planes. All right, so let me give you a little visual here first. Say we have a not very steep incline, and then let's make a steeper incline. And look at the forces involved here. If I have a block that's just sitting on that incline, Okay, uh, remember gravity force just comes always is straight down. That's a key thing. Okay, so this is the gravity force. Um, I'll label it on this side here. Straight down, okay, vertically. Now we're going to break that gravity force into two components. One component is going to go parallel to the, to the uh, ramp here, the incline and then one component is gonna go perpendicular. So it's kind of like you're making a new X and Y axis um, that's on an angle, if you wanna think about it that way. So if you tilted your paper, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I've got this new X and Y axis, okay? That goes parallel to the plane and then perpendicular. Okay, and I'll do, uh, I'll do tip to tail, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't matter. You could do from a common point, I'll do tip to tail. So I'm gonna have this one come down like this. Actually, I'm going to do from a common point, and I'm going to have this one come over like this. My goal is to get a rectangle. Okay. So, again, if you tilt your paper, you'll see I basically just came straight down and straight over and was making those components, those X and Y components. Let's just say your plane is now on an angle. Okay. So, this is your Y component. I'll just call it FY. This is the X component. I'll call it FX. Um, and that's the big idea, okay? If, let's say you're on a steeper incline. Try to make this gravity force about the same. I'll just kind of label it over here so it's out of the way. Um, so now same deal. I want to I want to think, okay, I'm going to go through the through the block there parallel to the plane, and then I'm going to kind of turn my paper and make this one that's perpendicular that goes 90 degrees to the plane here, make sure you're trying to make a 90. And now I've got to try to make the arrows along there. So I encourage you to turn your papers on an angle. I think it makes it easier to see it. I'm gonna go over until it meets there. I'm gonna come down until it meets there. I'm looking to make a rectangle, okay? If you don't see a rectangle, you did something wrong. Okay, you should see a nice rectangle here. All right, this is FX, this is FY. So the reason I show you this is just so you can compare <clears throat> what's going on in this case there's a very small fx and then a relatively larger fy meaning there's not very much force pulling it down the ramp but there is a lot of force holding it to the ramp holding this block down to the ramp um, as far as the gravity is pulling it on this one with the gravity pulling it's going to have a lot of force pulling it down the ramp to make it slide down and and less relatively less than it had over here even though it doesn't quite look like it because I didn't draw the scales right, but less force holding it to the ramp. Okay, in other words, this one's going to slide faster because it's got more force pulling it down. <clears throat> they both have the same gravity, it's just that we're looking at these components. Okay, let's do an example with some numbers. Let's just say a five kilogram block on a 40 degree incline. Okay. It'll say something like draw the free body diagram, okay? Which means draw all the forces that are acting. Hey, what's up, Ryan? Yeah, let me pause. Okay, let's draw this out. Draw it big. It'll be easier if we draw it pretty darn big. Roughly 40 degree angle down there. That goes here. Um, and draw this block up near the top. We'll make it easier. Five kilograms. So that's telling me the gravity force. Um, the FG, right, is 49 newtons. I'm going to put that off to the side just because I want to keep it out of the way. This is 49. So now we're saying, okay, I've got to make this a parallel one. And again, I'm going to turn sideways so I can kind of see. I want to go, I'm making this rectangle. That's the goal. So that should go all the way over there. 
<clears throat> and then this perpendicular one goes there. Draw these dotted lines in there so I can see your rectangle. Otherwise, I can't see you're getting it. And then you got the Fy and the FF. This is 49 newtons right here. <clears throat> okay. Here's the trick, guys. That 40 degrees actually goes right here. Okay, it goes in this spot here. Whatever this angle is here, it works out. This angle here will be the same. I don't know how to explain that spot, but it's just kind of that upper right of this triangle here. Okay, it just works out that way. All right, so Fx, think about it, it's actually this here is going to be opposite hypotenuse. That's actually a sine. So it's going to wind up being 49 times the sine of 40. And Fy is an adjacent uh, over hypotenuse situation. So it'll be 49 times the cosine. It will always work out that way. In this case, Fx will be the sine and Fy will be the cosine. Okay, let me grab my calculator. So I'm getting uh, 31.49 here, newtons, and then 49 times cos 40, uh, 37.54 uh, newtons here. Okay, so what do we got going on there? The next kind of step here, we're close. We did most of the hard work already. This, this is up here, 31.49 Newtons. This goes over here, 37.54 Newtons. Um, this is the force pulling it down the ramp. This is the force holding it to the ramp. So if I found the normal force, I should have, uh, should have uh, left a little more room up there. The normal force is actually gonna equal this one. The block is not moving in this direction. So this and this have to cancel out. So Fn, the normal force actually is the same as the Y force, 37.54 Newtons. That will be important later on. And then this Fx then is only, is really the net force. Okay, so, so for the situation we could say, well, the net force is gonna be the 31.49 Newtons. Because, you know, we're not worried about this one because we replace that one with these two. These actually cancel out. There's a normal force that cancels this one. So the net force is just this one. If I had to find the acceleration, I could do that pretty easy. Um, just saying 31.49 Newtons over <clears throat> the, what was it, five kilograms? It would be about 6.3 meter per second squared, which makes sense because it's not, it's got to be less than 9.8, right? If it's falling, this can be definitely less acceleration than if it was just free falling. So 6.3 seems reasonable. We're, we're saying no friction. If there was no friction involved, uh, this would be the acceleration. The next lesson is, okay, we're going to add on friction. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Get a hold of me if you have questions.